I'm back with Father Frank Pavone. He's the National Director of Priests for Life, a position he's held since 1993. Um, Father Pavone, um, let's talk a little bit about the um, the Christian basis for a pro-life position, because it's sometimes said that not just as a Catholic, but even as a Christian more generally, that if you're pro-choice, um, if you take a kind of optional position uh, on abortion, or if you're aggressively pro-abortion, you're not a Christian, or you're not behaving in a Christian way. So what is the Christian basis for holding abortion to be a kind of inexcusable evil? You know, the natural, we can look at this in, in two ways. Christianity teaches uh, uh, elements of natural law that we can know just by human reason. And then, of course, Christianity teaches truths that we can only know because God reveals them. He has spoken in his word and uh, through his church. So looking at it just from human reason, we're pro-life because we're, because we're alive, because we realize instinctively life is better than death and you can't kill babies. You can't kill the innocent uh, and it's just violent. So on that natural level, uh, the church actually, uh, and many Christian churches, base their position on reason, on science, on the awareness that we know when a human life begins. Then from Revelation, well, we realize that God loves human life. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, to the one who gains the victory, I will sit him with me on my throne. So this exaltation of human life, uh, that God wants life. He did not make death, as scripture says, and he wants to share his life with us forever. So to say, okay, this life has just come into existence, we're going to snuff it out, is a slap in the face to God, is a denial of really the, 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 of the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ, and of all the hope that the gospel gives to humanity. Now, you mentioned um, natural law and the idea that as humans, we can recognize what life is. We have a stake in life ourselves, um, and we can see that life in the womb, however you want to make distinctions about it, that's developing life. If you leave it alone, it's going to become a human being. Now, that would imply that everybody on the other side of the debate, the so-called pro-choicers, the so-called pro-abortion types, they know that too. Um, so what do you think, let's take for a moment the psychology of the pro-abortion position. Is it simply that they are sacrificing a moral truth that they know to be true on the altar of convenience and selfishness? Or is there no, some kind I, of a moral ideal on their side? I, I love this question, Dinesh, because I, I've often said to, to people that someday psychologists and psychiatrists are going to have a field day as they look back at this whole debate over pro-life and pro-choice. Sometimes, especially if I speak to high school and college groups, I'll begin by holding up a pencil and I'll say, now, everybody, what is this? And they'll say, of course, a pencil. And I'll say, now mark my words, before the end of tonight's discussion, some of you will be denying that this is a pencil. And what I mean by that is you, you go through the science, you show them the baby, and because of a deep woundedness, and, and we can get into this in more detail, uh, uh, some will actually look at the baby and say, that's not a baby. It is a denial of truth. And when you think of it, the term pro-choice, it's focusing on will. It's my choice, my decision, my, my, my. And but what about the, the reason behind it? What about the truth that's independent of your choice? At its core, the most radical version of the pro-choice mindset is, well, I create truth. What I say is true is true. And we hear the leftists talk about this all the time. Oh, my truth, and you know, I gotta go into my truth and respect your truth and so forth. Um, but there's a woundedness too. There's a deep pain on the on, uh, within those that promote abortion, as some of it is from a personal involvement in this tragic action, and uh, some of it is simply from uh, other wounds that they've incurred in their lives. Uh, and pro-life psychologists and psychiatrists have uh, done a fair amount of, of research showing this. Seems to me, Father Pavone, that. 
Abortion is in some way the debris of the sexual revolution and, and that even if we were to win a victory at the Supreme Court level, um, that would only dispatch abortion to the states, which would now decentralize the fight. So the long-term battle of the pro-life movement, it seems to me, is only just beginning. Uh, you have to change laws, but you also have to change culture and institutions, and at the end of the day, a lot of human hearts. Would you agree? Uh, yes, definitely. And, and you know, this is where, and of course, in your introduction of, of me, you mentioned about Rachel's Vineyard. Uh, I, I serve and, and Priests for Life helps to um, uh, essentially operate this, this worldwide ministry for healing the wounds of abortion. We have Silent No More where people are speaking about their stories, their experience of abortion. We have seen that the healing of that wound is a key to not only leading that person out of the darkness of abortion, but to leading our whole society out of that darkness. It's a process of rehumanizing uh, the individual. You can't dehumanize the baby without dehumanizing yourself. And why would a person want to dehumanize themselves? Well, again, because there's pain, there's injury in their own life from many other factors. Now, none of this denies the responsibility that people have. To, to do the right thing and to come to know uh, what is right. Uh, yes, people have responsibility and there is, the guilt is real. But there are these factors, powerful psychological factors at work. And the healing, the changing of minds and hearts that we often talk about in the work of the pro-life movement in the church is very much connected with the healing of minds and hearts. So much pain. That's why we always say to people, we in the pro-life movement aren't standing in front of the world pointing fingers of condemnation. We are standing in front of the world offering hands of mercy and healing and hope and help. The pro-life movement is about replacing despair with hope, replacing wounds with healing. So it's not a matter of setting the, the child against the mother. It's ultimately what you're saying is saving one and healing the other. You know, it's... a. Uh, it, deep in the Christian roots of this, which we were referring to earlier, is the paradox of the cross, that when we give ourselves away for the other, that's when we find ourselves, the core teaching of Jesus. Uh, and where is that more true than in that mother-child relationship? She thinks, uh, she's made to think by others, we should say, that I can advance, I can live, I can thrive only if I snuff out the life of this child. Whereas the reality is, if I give myself to this child, uh, that child is going to thrive, and there I find my own thriving. Uh, you know, it's, it's, as I often point out, the same words Jesus uses to show us the paradox of the cross uh, and to give us life, the same words we priests say in every Mass, are the words co-opted by the abortion industry. This is my body. And... They say, this is my body, I can do what I want, I can kill the child. Jesus said, this is my body, given up for you, that you may live, not that you may die. That's amazing. Thank you very much, Father Pravon. I really appreciate you joining me on the podcast. Thank you for having me.